What makes you think you qualify for this job? What? Nah, bro. Pepsi Max. What? Bro, what's with the links? Hi, yeah, I'm Sue. This is Derek. We're here. Okay, 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 okay. Bro, I thought I was about Because your son just looked us up online, you know, to watch us. Matt! Matt, darling, there's some people here to see you. So he watches you online? Yeah, you know, on his laptop. iPad, PlayStation. Mm, his phone, your phone. Smart TV Can projector. Yeah, anyway, we usually perform what? for adults, but your son's just a kid. He might not know how relationships actually work. We don't even talk about consent, do we? Now we just get straight to it. Yeah, and I'd never act like that in real life. Nah. <laughs> hey, Maddie. Oh. Hi. Oh. Okay, Sandro, stay calm. You know what to do here. All right, Maddie. It sounds like it's time to have a talk about the difference between what you see online and real life relationships. No, no judgment. Bro. Many young Kiwis are using you porn to learn about that. sex. Keep it real online. Get help and advice at keepitrealonline.govt.nz. No, bro. Yeah, that kid did some help. Bro, I was way too young. Clean jazz. Clean jazz. Smoothie. Making smoothie. Calendar. No meetings today. Remember, dentist at 9.30. Fire off. Fire off. Rich open and door. Motherfucker. Door open. And we're gonna do one more. Oh, yeah. Open door. Wrong voice command. Open door. Wrong uh, voice command. Open. Open door. Repeat that. Open the door? Numb shit. I didn't understand that. Hey, open door! Play on the floor. Sink on the floor. Sink on the floor. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Open the door. Hey, right there. With a rock. Open the door. Uh -huh. huh. Open the door. Wait, that is kind of smart. That's kind of a funny ad. Right. I've had my ups and downs, my fair share of bumpy roads and heavy winds. That's what made me what I am today. Now I
I am, you are, he, she, it is. I am, you are, he, she, it is. Robert, I am. Hi. Can you show me the way to the beach? Beach. Towel. Show me the way to the beach. Fork. Knife. Bread. I love you. You are perfect. I'm going to kill you. I'm going to fucking kill you. I love you. You are perfect. Aww. I thank you. It must be Suitcase. Slippers. Toothbrush. Passport. Pyjamas. Okay, so we travel. Be good dog. Hi. I am. Hi. I am. Okay. It's made in Poland? Wait, what? Argentina. Oh wow. The more you know. Huh. Pod piss. Hi. I am your grandpa. Is it Polish? Could be, yeah. That looks like Polish. Oh no, I've seen this one. Oh, this is so bad. This one's so bad. Want to hear from Poland? Uh, toilet. <laughs> Toiletta or Giber? Hey, you got two different words for toilet. That's crazy. That's like Because young people say Kibel. Huh. <laughs> like. Like what? Crazy transition. Not really. I'm not here. I'm not trying to learn language. <laughs> Smoking in a bus is crazy. Studies show that a person loses seven minutes of his life every time he smokes a cigarette. Be nice to smokers. They don't have much time left. Oh. So it's like, I, you're old, you're gonna die. You, you, you need to see. I don't need to see because I don't smoke. Okay. Man, this 555 five, five deal's really popular. Mr. Trump, here you go. 
But three medium pizzas, five dollars each. This one. Tell you what, I'll counter that offer with an even better one. Here's the deal: you give me those three pizzas, only I'll give you just five dollars a piece. Sure. Okay. Still got it, Donald. Still got it. Call now and get three or more medium one-topping pizzas for just five bucks each. Get the door. It's the Domino's five five five. Farting in that elevator as well. An abridged guide to flatulence. The blast furnace. What happened? Deep breath. The rolling thunder. The horn of Jericho. Spanish wind. The cover up. Nice cover up. The long goodbye. Seven. Damn, what the fuck? Farts are funny. But frequent gas and bloating may be possible symptoms of colon cancer. So know the warning signs at any age and share this video with your friends cancer. and family. Find out more about the symptoms at keepfartsfunny.org. Together, fuck? let's keep farts funny. Oh, the ad stopped. Oh. Unavailable. Oh, I guess I can't watch this TikTok. Road rage is now being taken to a new extreme with people treating the roads as if they were in GTA. This right here is definitely a more. I've seen that. Police work is filled with unpredictability where routine encounters can quickly escalate. 33 minutes. Um, maybe if we have nothing else to watch. Eh. Survival first parenting. Prehistoric to early civilizations. It's the prehistoric parenting style. Era and the earth was basically a giant deadly petting zoo. Dinosaurs, saber-toothed tigers, and mammoths roamed freely, making every day a potential episode of Jurassic Park Home Edition. Dinosaurs. As a parent in this era, your parenting skills were about as developed as a T-Rex's arms. Nurturing your little one's self-esteem is as foreign as a smartphone to a caveman. Your main goal was to keep your kid alive long enough to pass on the family hunting secrets, ensuring they didn't become the latest item on the saber-toothed tiger's lunch menu. Basically, survival was the priority, and that meant kids grew up fast. Like, as soon as they could walk, they were learning how to hunt so they could start contributing to the family from a young age. Makes Childhood sense. was more like a training camp where instead of arts and crafts, you taught your kids to spearfish and fend off wolves. Yeah. If your kid could hunt, gather fruits, and avoid taking an accidental lava bath, congratulations! You're basically the cave parent of the year. And if they made it to adulthood without being gobbled up by a wild beast, well, you'd be the talk of the cave. Because of this constant survival oh, wow. mode, there wasn't much room for coddling or emotional heart-to-hearts. So if your child scraped their knee, you'd tell them to rub some dirt on it and get back to gathering berries before you become a bear's brunch. Authoritarian parenting, medieval times. If you were a child born during this time, then you would be raised by very strict authoritarian parents who did everything with an iron fist to toughen you up, because the world was a really, really tough place back then. You see, this era saw a lot of pretty Kinda. dark times, so it was literally referred to as the Dark Ages. Wars lasted for several years, the bubonic plague and a great famine that wiped out half the world, extreme poverty and scientific advancement moved slower than a knight in full plate armor. 
Now imagine your mom, who had lost her own parents to the bubonic plague as a child, and then your dad, who was shipped off to war from a tender age trying to reason with you or offer you a snack swap after refusing to eat your medieval porridge. Well, it was either you ate or you starved. Your parents were like drill sergeants with a clipboard full of strict rules, and the motto in every household was, my way or the dungeon, which isn't much of an option for the sex anybody. dungeon. Rational and nurturing parenting. All right, so this type of parenting started in the 17th and 18th century, and it consisted of intellectual topics like God, reason, nature, and God. humanity. It was during this period that a philosopher named a John joke. Locke introduced the idea that children were blank slates waiting to be molded by the wisdom of their parents and that kids actually had potential. Well, John Locke's ideas started to take shape in the parents' minds, and the rational and nurturing parent style was born. Suddenly, parents were guiding their children with a gentle but firm yeah, hand, like trying to herd cats, but with compassion. Discipline was still important, but now it came with the side of explanation and a garnish of understanding. So if you were caught poking the family cow with a stick instead of being sent to milk it for eternity, your parents would sit with you and actually explain why you shouldn't do such a thing. The goal was to help kids understand right from wrong. Why that cow has only two udders? on their own rather than just scaring them into thinking the boogeyman would eat them if they misbehaved. Of course, this was still the 17th century, so parents weren't exactly letting their kids run the household like tiny emperors. Even if you pat your child on the back for a well-done yes, job, don't parenting. overdo it or show too much compassion. Moralistic and rigid parenting. If you were a kid in the 1950s, your home was basically like a military camp where everything had a rule and those rules were written in stone. In this style of parenting, your parents are more like drill sergeants, and the phrase, because I said so, is the golden rule of the house. These parents believed in strict rules, no, high expectations, and no-nonsense discipline. It's the parenting equivalent of wearing a really tight corset, and the idea here is to shape kids into moral res- Like, now nah, you're doing way too much with this. Responsible adults who can tell right from wrong in their sleep. Well, unfortunately for the kids, there was no room for creativity, independence, or anything remotely fun. Coloring inside the lines wasn't just encouraged, it was absolutely expected and required. And if you mistakenly step out of line or disobeyed any rules, no matter how small, you might get grounded until you're eligible for social security. Imagine asking for an extra cookie and getting a 30 minute lecture on the dangers of gluttony, or trying to watch a little TV only to be told that idle hands are the devil's workshop. These parents had a black and white view of the world where there's good behavior and bad behavior with no gray areas, no middle ground. Emotions in these households were about as welcome as a porcupine in a balloon factory. Crying was not allowed. Laughing too loudly? Absolutely not. The ideal child in this system oh, is wow. basically a very short, well-behaved... So literally, yeah, I was about to say an NPC. Robot, same thing. Robot. Scientific parenting. That's crazy. If you were a parent in the 1920s and didn't have the latest bestseller, Dr. John Watson's how-to manual Who? on raising a child like a well-oiled machine, then you would probably be a very bad parent. Oiled up this machine. is because parents at this age treated raising a child like some sort of science program, and every child needed a step-by-step -step guide. So if your baby cries, you check the manual. Time to feed? Better consult the chart. What? Parenting has just gone from an art to a science experiment. Psychology and behaviorism were all the rage. Age, and parents were told that every aspect of child rearing could be optimized if they followed the right steps. Forget cuddling your baby whenever they fuss. Experts like Watson warned that too much affection could turn your child into a needy, clingy adult. Instead, you were supposed to keep things cool, calm, and most importantly, on schedule. So if you have a crying baby, let them cry it out. It's all part of building character. Stoic approach. That's and speaking build. of... Let him cry? This character build is crazy. ...of discipline, it was all about what? training, not punishment. You weren't supposed to yell or spank. Instead, you used positive reinforcement to shape your child's behavior. It's like training a tiny, adorable, somewhat unpredictable lab rat. Reward good behavior, ignore the bad, and hope you don't end up with a child who thinks the silent treatment is a form of affection. Permissive parenting. 
Fast forward to the 1960s, oh, that's like, when I don't the parenting give a fuck. pendulum has swung so oh, far in the other direction that it's practically orbiting Mars. Parents decided to go softer than a marshmallow in a microwave after the Second World War left the world more shaken than a martini in James Bond's hands. The war made parents a little more lovable because of all the deaths they'd experienced. So kids were raised with a much freer hand. The world had just been through a lot, and parents wanted to give their kids the freedom and happiness they might have missed out oh. on. So rules were more like suggestions, okay. and saying no was totally out of the question. This parenting style was introduced by Dr. Benjamin Spock, who encouraged parents to relax and trust their instincts. This loosely translates to the fact that if your child wants to wear pajamas all day or finger paint the walls, you shouldn't stifle their creativity. Um, Permissive parents believed in letting kids explore and express themselves Finger without too many house. boundaries. So the drill shifted from sergeant to being your child's best buddy. Open communication was key, even if that meant listening to your seven-year-old's detailed critique of why broccoli is the root of all evil. However, with all this free- Actually, bro, broccoli, I don't know, broccoli gets way too much hate. Broccoli is actually so fucking good. Way too much hate, bro. Freedom came a few challenges. Kids raised in permissive households sometimes struggled with boundaries because, well, they didn't really have any. They might not have learned the whole actions have consequences thing because their mm. parents were too busy ensuring they were comfortable and content. Helicopter parenting. Picture this, your teenager is about to embark on the perilous journey to the corner store. You've packed their backpack with enough snacks to survive a zombie apocalypse and given them a map that would make Christopher Columbus jealous. You're hovering nearby with a GPS tracker ready to swoop. Uh, that's like, bro, that's like you, you're like being very worried about your Spin kid. in case anything goes wrong. This yeah. was basically what helicopter parenting was about. Parents were practically hovering all over their kids like helicopters, hence the name. Whether it's doing homework, monitoring every- I mean, it's kind of a W, because, you know, you care about your kid. You don't want nothing bad to happen to Free them. social interaction like a CIA agent, or signing them up for so many extracurriculars they need a personal assistant. These parents are more involved than yeast, yeast in bread dough. This parenting style took off in the late 20th century as concerns about safety, academic success, and future job prospects skyrocketed faster than a helicopter. Well, you get the idea. Parents wanted to ensure their kids had every advantage possible, so they started micromanaging every aspect of their lives. Got a problem? Mom and dad was there to fix it before you even knew it existed. But it's not just about being cautious. These parents were often motivated by love and a desire to protect their kids from the struggles yeah. they faced yeah. growing up. They didn't want their children to experience failure, disappointment, or even minor inconveniences. So they made it their mission to clear every obstacle from their path. Of course, all this hovering had its downsides. Kids raised by helicopter parents sometimes struggle with independence because when you're used to someone swooping in to solve your problems, learning to stand on your own two yeah. feet can be as challenging as trying to eat soup with a fork. While parenting styles are evolving over time, one constant thing is the entertainment and information we pr- Hey, Krillin. Hey, I'm chilling as always. How about you, bro? provide so join our discord server now authoritative parenting so it's a typical evening and your 12 year old son is throwing a fit because you won't let him play Fortnite before finishing his homework instead of unleashing your inner <laughs> drill sergeant you Imagine. calmly explain the homework nah, if i have a kid and i see my kid playing Fortnite, nah that's just not gonna happen first play later rule no yelling no power struggle just a clear rule with a fair outcome it's like you're running a tiny slightly chaotic democracy this is authoritative parenting in action where balance is key and being both firm and kind i mean shit happens that's fine complain hey still alive hey same can't complain back from work editing how's the day been uh pretty good been releasing music and uh actually i'm not getting any hate for some reason so that's good is the name of the game it's like walking a tightrope while juggling tricky but bitches want you to apologize for them calling you gay what 
impressive when you pull it off. Often seen as the gold standard in modern parenting, it's all about finding that sweet spot between being in charge and being supportive. You're the parent, not a pushover, but you're also not a dictator. The goal is to raise a kid who's independent, confident, and knows how to make good decisions without you having to micromanage every breath they take. While this parenting style still had rules, you had to properly explain each rule's pros and cons to your child. So if your kid wants to stay up past curfew, you don't just say, no, because I said so. Instead, you negotiate with them, tell them why it's necessary to come back Ooh, that, that might be the most best parenting. ...on time, and even bribe them with something if possible. Discipline wasn't a punishment, but a teaching experience for both bribe. the parent and the child. Basically, if your child messes up, you aren't supposed to fly off the handle and start going crazy. Instead, you should have a heart-to-heart -heart conversation- Ooh, the hate on me? I mean, I mean, it's classic, uh, TikTok, I mean. They just hating me for no reason, but that's just TikTok being TikTok. But, yeah. ...and discuss how to improve next time. Well, your whole it's class. the classic, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed approach. Only with much more constructive feedback and less guilt tripping. Snowplow parenting. So, just picture yourself sitting at a pub one day. Watch when you spark TikTok today. <laughs> You'll be dogging your shit so hard. Yeah, I don't know. It's just TikTok being a TikTok. People just hating for no reason. Hey, Johnny, hey, when how you, you suddenly doing, hear bro? a loud rumble outside, you look out the window and see this giant snowplow clearing the road. It's not just clearing snow, it has also removed every obstacle in its path from the tiny rocks to the twigs and even a few squirrels. Now, replace that giant snowplow with a parent and those obstacles oh, with nah. anything that might cause their They're kid even the much. slightest bit of stress or trouble. Snowplow parents are like the ultimate road cleaners who have made it their life's mission to make sure their kid's path through life is as smooth as freshly poured Guinness. That includes oh, getting rid of any Guinness. tiny inconveniences or spoiling the child with every single thing they could possibly want. It's like they're determined to make their child's journey through life as smooth as possible. They swoop in to handle every little thing, forget their lunch, boom, it's delivered faster than you can say Uber Eats. Well, sadly, this type of parenting doesn't really help the child because they grow up to become struggling, dependent adults who can't do anything on their own because they're so used to having everything done for them. Tiger Parenting Chances are you've been in a class with one of those kids who take every single subject, are part of all the extracurricular activities like debate and football, and still somehow manage to make it to the top of the class. If yes, then you've met a child that lives with tiger parents. And no, her parents are not literally tigers. They are what? just really strict, overbearing parents who have extremely high goals for their children with lots of expectations yeah, of what they much. want. These parents treat their kids like they are training them for the Olympics, and no slacking is tolerated. You must be the best in sports, the best in school, the best in socializing, and the best in arts, and there is no room for second place. Tiger parents are also very disciplined, and their rules are non-negotiable. They also believe that tough love is the best type of love because how else would their children toughen up? The plus side to all this is that Damn. the kids who were raised with tiger parenting style always excel in whatever they do because they've been trained like Navy SEALs all their lives. However, the constant pressure and expectations can become extremely overwhelming. Free Range Parenting Let's say it's a Saturday morning. Your parents are enjoying their coffee, reading the paper, and you're bouncing off the walls with energy. Instead of lining up a schedule of carefully curated activities, they hand you a couple of bucks, tell you to go grab your friends, and suggest you head to the local park. You and your buddies spend the day building forts, playing hide-and-seek, and maybe even stopping by the corner store for some snacks. You learn how to make decisions, solve problems, and even barter for the best trading cards. When you finally roll back home, dirty, tired, and smiling, you've not only had a blast, but also picked up a bunch of life skills without even realizing it. In the free-range style of parenting, parents do not hover, check in, or try to schedule and plan the lives of their kids. Instead, they give them the freedom to explore the world on their own terms. Parents in this style trust the kids to handle situations on their own, whether it's crossing the street, making decisions, or negotiating playground politics. Baba Think of it as raising Dylan little FK adventurers just who subscribe learn. It. What? Hey, Krillin, bro. Appreciate the sub. God damn.
Give me VIP for spam. What do you mean for spam? I got got you family. Come on now. Was not expecting that. Man, my day's going even better now. And to navigate life by, well, Appreciate actually it. living it. What makes free-range parenting unique is the emphasis on independence and self-reliance. It's all about giving kids the freedom to learn through... So if someone subs, you can spam W. ...experience. While some parents might gasp at the idea of letting a 10-year-old... Fucking dope dog, A. Hey, gotta, gotta keep it on. Gotta keep grinding forever. Uh, what I'm trying to say, uh, if you if you give up, then you then you have lost. There you go. To walk to school alone, free range parents like see that. it as a chance for their child to build confidence and street smarts. Attachment parenting. Remember when you were a baby, when life was all about snuggles, warmth, and constant attention? Every time you made even the tiniest peep, your parents were right there, ready to pick you up, feed you, or rock you gently to sleep. It's yeah, like living in a never-ending no. spa day, where you're the VIP guest and every need is met with love and care. Basically, attachment parenting is all about building a strong, loving connection with your child from day one. The idea is to be super responsive to your baby's needs, creating a secure, nurturing environment where your little one feels safe and loved. Think of it like the ultimate Velcro relationship, where you and your baby are stuck together. This style of parenting focuses on things like breastfeeding on demand, co-sleeping, and baby wearing, where you carry your baby around in a sling or carrier to keep them close to your body. The goal is to help your baby feel secure, trusting that you'll always be there to meet their needs. The idea is that by responding quickly and warmly to your baby's cries, you're teaching them that the world is a trustworthy place and that they can count on you no matter what. Nah. It's like being your baby's personal Head security blanket, but instead of just providing comfort, you're also also laying the foundation for a strong, healthy relationship that will last a lifetime. Have you ever noticed how when you open Instagram or TikTok... This guy just yapping? I'm not sure about this. I'm good on that. And we got TikTok. Alright, now we got spam. Hey, talk about spam and spam is here. What the hell? How you doing, spam? When you get mad at the game, but everything around you is too valuable. So you start doing... Oh, bad day today? Hey, it'd be like that, but surely you'll get over it. That's true, though. Yeah, shit happens. What's anti furry madness combat fans after finding out Crinkles is a furry? <laughs> okay. Wait, is he actually a furry? No way. What? Yo. I would not be that dog. I would not be that dog. They ha Bro, if I was there, I would not go and run in and get my dog. I'd be like, "I right, bro, that's your meal of the day. I don't want to die. That's your meal of the day. That's on the dogs. If they dying, they dying." What the fuck? She pushed the bear. That's crazy. Read you. Oh, he did draw furries. Ah. Uh. Huh. That is a bit sus. Am 
Motherfuckers trying to enter the egg. A doctor, movie star, president, billionaire, model. <laughs> me out there. <laughs> Allow me to pass through for a moment. <laughs> right, that's me. Hell yeah. Real. Subway surfers. Oh, that looks cursed. Who is she? That's like, okay. What? How was this allowed on Cartoon Network? Pops, I found your mustache monthly. I remember this. Oh, his skins. Yeah, that was awkward. Stop playing for a second. When I went upstairs, Pops was getting out of the shower. Yeah, so? And he didn't have a towel. Ew. I tried not to look and just give him the magazine, but I saw his... His junk mail. <laughs> no, dude, I'm mentally scarred. It's like the image is glued to the inside of my eyelids. Every saggy, wrinkled, shriveled, pasty... He went into the details, man. Unethical but legal ways to make money. Part 30. Now, this oh, method only go. works if you are a guy and not a girl. Oh. First, you will take the bus and go to the mall. Once you are there, you will go to the store and buy a wig and some women clothes and oh, shoes. No. Oh, no. This is, this is who I am. No, I'm out. When you return home, you will wear those clothes and put on the wig you just oh, bought. What no. the fuck, bro? After that, you will go to the DMV center and change your gender on the driver's license from male to female. When you do that, you will go to a women's only pool. When you get in there, you will make yourself comfortable and act normally. The women there will feel extremely uncomfortable since you are not really a female. Now you will wait until one of them comes and shouts at you, asking you to leave the place, which you will tell her Only that you identify as a woman and have the right to be in the pool with other innocent women. Now she will get extremely angry and tell you that you are a guy and not really a girl. When you hear that, you will immediately take your phone and call your lawyer oh. and file a lawsuit oh. against this woman for misgendering you. You will ask the pool's manager for the camera footage to be evidence in your case with the evidence you have. Have. You will win the lawsuit easily and walk out with thousands of dollars. Then you can return to your okay. old life and change your driver's license to the old one. Or you can continue doing this over and over. Bro, the world is fucked. Tag a friend who might do this. I mean, yeah, wait, that is possible. But that is like... I mean, you gotta be on the grind to do all that shit. But I... When you found the best meme ever, but you accidentally refresh, oh. Yeah. That happens. You froze. I can't draw a straight line. I don't have the talent, Bob, to do what you're doing. That's baloney. Talent is a pursued interest. In other words, anything that you're willing to practice, you can do. Hey, that is facts. Everyone is bad at, bad at like everything, but you if you focus on that specific thing over and over, uh, you get better at it. And this is no exception. That is facts. Bob Ross. Right, speaking from the dead, still facts. I repeat though. To watch the Olympics, this broadcast engineer used his impressive backyard satellite to scan the airwaves for sports channels and stumbled upon a peculiar signal. I saw Pyongyang on it and uh, that piqued my curiosity. It was like, is this really coming out of North Korea? Wait. Turns out it really was. He, he found a North Korea cable. 
tapped into North Korean state TV. Or whatever. He started watching TV. and couldn't stop. It's really mind-boggling stuff when you start watching their propaganda. The morning broadcast begins with the national anthem. And tributes to North Korea's former rulers. There are cartoons, news programs praising the regime, and of course, the star of the show. The god himself. Kim Jong-un is presented as a god. Yeah. Provoking fan frenzies, reminiscent of Taylor Swift. A man of the people, even braving floodwaters, narrowly dodging tree branches to rescue his citizens. Fairly posted the video clips on YouTube, where they've received millions Dictator of views. Pope. What do you make of, of the reaction? People have a weird True. curiosity about what's going on in North Korea. I think it's fascinating. It provides a, a rare glimpse. In this expert nah, says this North is Korean scary. TV is rarely accessible from the outside, and almost nothing gets in. North Koreans caught watching foreign programming are sent to labor camps or even Yo. executed. Yo. Controlling the public's mind has been the fundamental focus of the regime. They are massively brainwashed from kindergarten onwards and uh, they are exposed to uh, some of the most complex uh, propaganda campaigns that we have ever seen in human history. A rare window into that unparalleled propaganda machine through this suburban Ontario backyard. Jeff Semple, Global News, Mississauga, Ontario. Crazy how he found it. Shut up, it is not. I do have more links, but you must go and get them so prepare something to watch. Wait, what? Do I continue the links or what do you mean? Okay. Me reminding that their precious nuclear weapons are literally illegal. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. How countries are reacting to this information. I mean, yeah, it's illegal if a civilian has it. Sarcasm. <laughs> okay, it's kind of dumb. Everybody knows what Casper did. <laughs> what is this alcohol? You know what? Who? Excuse my the language ghost? here, but I'm going to say it. This dog is an absolute badass. This topic has been touched on numerous times, but again, it is recently going viral on Instagram, and a few of you guys sent it to me, and this clip shows a dog named Casper, and you'll notice he looks pretty damn mean. And again, Casper is a complete and utter badass. For some context, Casper was a sheepdog, and he is of the dog breed, the Great Pyrenees. And these are obviously very large dogs, getting up to around 100 pounds. He looks sad, if anything. I wouldn't say badass. Size. And back in 2022, Casper, while tending the sheep on his farm, ended up encountering a pretty large pack of coyotes, 11 in total. For those that don't know, coyotes usually have no issue taking down large dogs, and they do consume them on a regular basis. Oh. But Casper, at 20 months of age, ended up taking on all 11 coyotes, sustained some injuries, but took down 8 of them and chased the remaining 3 off. He did- Bro, 1v11? What? He did survive this ordeal, and because of this, he was nominated as Farm Dog of the Year for 2022. Pretty crazy stuff. Damn. Bro's the MVP. MVM? What's that? Stop spending your money on stupid shit. Facts. Oh. Ha ha ha. My depression level. School tomorrow. You have 30 seconds to kill yourself. Classic. Bed frame allows bed for people and playground for cats. Cats at 3 a.m. under the bed. Wait, that is cool. The 
entire storyline of the movies is actually being told in reverse, and the true ending is Wait, pretty what? chilling. Instead of moving forward in time, the movies are actually going backwards. In the fifth film, we witness the formation of the solar system. In the fourth, the Earth splits and the continents form. The third introduces dinosaurs. The second covers the Ice Age. And the first Wait, one shows yeah. the emergence of humans. We can confirm this was planned from the start, because in the first movie, there's a scene where Sid stumbles across cave drawings that reference all the events from the later films, which actually happened in the past. But the most heartbreaking and disturbing part is when Manny recalls memories in the cave paintings. Manny isn't the small mammoth in those flashbacks. He's the adult, and the other two are actually Ellie and Marita. The real message here? It was humans who ultimately caused oh. their demise. What the fuck? That kind of just mind blow me. No, to racism. No. No to racism. No al racism. Yeah. No to racism. Yeah. No. Bo, bo, bo. Wait, 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 wait. Random equals funny. Un video. Why? Why is this a thing? Nine plus nine months. My first vape. Not even a one year old. Ma, mi gente, me gustaría saber de dónde tú pides el tiempo. Hey, that Oreo show looks clean though. Coma. Now that looks clean too. When human extinction with the first foot. Yeah. Barbara King. <laughs> Just in case. Um. Monopolic. I grew up watching. What? And now I realized you never grow up. Do better. Nah, L comment. Hold up. We writing is this fire. Oh, his writing is this fire? Imagine growing up. I would never. That's why it's L. I want to stay goofy forever. Bulgarian hospital. Hey, I mean, if it's working, trying to make allegations. I mean, he does, yeah. I'd say it's funny, though, but I. What? Now that has to be AI. That looks so clean though. Yeah, it's an AI. Yeah, it's an image cut too. Damn, that looks so real. That's scary. <laughs> Alright, who got all that? Shrek? Nah. The shirt doesn't fit at all. But alright, fair enough. My brother told me how to taste the bag. Oh, no, bro. Fuck you. They got brain rotted. Consume that shop, yeah. This link doesn't work. Well, I guess I'm skipping this one.
most tattooed man, the most two decades worth of ink. Ooh, that gotta hurt. Two laser sessions to eliminate 170 tattoos, which recovered 95% of the time. Damn. Nah, bro, like, at this point, I mean, I would rather just keep the tattoos on. That looks horrible. Nikki. Hey, Nikki. I know it's about to be our, some rat dog moment. Look nicer without, like, have. Uh, I don't know. That almost. <laughs> that almost scared me. Motherfucker, uh, why? Like, how could you love that rat dog? Nikki? Nikki? My little angel, my little love, I love you. The money. Where's the money? Where is that? <laughs> Let's surprise Nikki, Bonaville, Nikki. Nikki. Best little Nikki. cupcake. I will give you a candy. Take. Take that. No, 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 no. You no. got food and you're still angry. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Goofy, oh. <laughs> I filter. That was a laugh? No. What the hell, your friend? <laughs> what? What the hell, your friend? <laughs> Bro just cummed out of his mouth. <laughs> what? Bro just cummed out of his mouth. I know who this gonna be. Uh, I mean like the more more you look into it, you're like that's not what he has. But if you look, it's like very fast. I mean, I guess, yeah. PC, because you have two hours of laptop. That Roblox costs five FPS. Damn. You're in the trenches, trenches. Everything dead. Alright. Guys, I literally did not mean to hit him in the eye. You feel so bad. Holy. Yeah, you gotta feel bad after that. <laughs> What the fuck? Firecracker? Autumn bo- Bombe How you g- Nah, that has to be illegal what The fuck? I've been here 60 years and I'm still not bored Wait, that's kinda interesting that's like sticks that look like guns. Who has all the weapons? True. Wait, that is cool though. 
It just collects all the sticks that looks like guns. Now that goes hard though. That's right and did his house. Oh, he's oiled up. Okay. <laughs> Peace with Japan. Gotta show them what they're fighting for. Nah, bro, that's kind of disrespectful. The long ones. Pause. <laughs> He's too fat. He's too fat. Oh, that was the last link, though. <laughs> okay, bro. Nah, that's fucked up. <laughs> hey, UK, okay. what's moment. going on with you? A lot of people were protesting here for us to rejoin the EU. Well, that's a oh. good idea, isn't it? Nah, we left you a while ago. The people voted. Wait, the people voted for you to leave the EU, UK? Yeah, back in 2016, we had a vote whether we should leave or yeah. not. People voted for us to leave the EU. Well, you should come back. We did work together on trade, travel, and rules. Yeah, I don't know why they left. money from us in order to stay in the it EU. Was so but wasn't it easier for you to travel to countries in the EU back when you were in? And even trading was easier? Actually, it was, yeah. and that's why the people are protesting. So, UK, you might be going back? Well, we have our new prime minister. Like, they're so dumb. They're like, yeah, UK, Britain, number one, left the EU. Now they're like, oh, fuck, we need to go back. Here's Starmer, who Idiotus, actually man. wanted to stay in the EU. So you're coming back? Nah, he doesn't really seem like he's gonna undo that decision. Aww. But he's meeting with the leader of the really? EU to make better trade deals. So hopefully that would be better for people. But we want you back. We had a good thing going on, didn't we? EU, it's not you. It's me. But we can work things out. It's been four years already nah, since I You should have found other countries that are better for you than me. I feel like I shouldn't be here now. Of course, I want to to discuss with you, uh, I think where we are together, I think we have common view that the war in Ukraine has to be stopped and Putin can't win and Ukrainians have to prevail and I want to discuss with you the details of our plan. We have a very good relationship. Well, he's not a president though. Relationship. But okay. And I also have a very good relationship, as you know, with President Putin. And I think uh, if we win, I think we're going to get it resolved very quickly. Very well. I really think we're going to get it. I hope we have more good relations. We're going to have. Oh, I see. Trump be winning yeah. everything. But, but you know, it takes two to tango. You know, and we will. Uh, we're going to have a good meeting today. And I think the fact that we're even together today is a very good sign. Hmm. All right. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> Wait. <laughs> he wanna beef, he got beef. You got beef, dumbass. <laughs> Is he stuck? What?
That's fucked up. He just think motherfuckers act when girls wear spaghetti straps. I mean, yeah. Ja, okay. Oh, ja. Na, aber, aber was zum Henker ist mit Medienmarkt Spanien nicht in Ordnung? They got brain rot, bro, in Poland. Das war nur ein Beispiel. Ich weiß nicht warum einfach. Ich verstehe die. Ich verstehe über die Hälfte und mehr davon einfach nicht, ne? Ja, ich hatte mal Spanisch damals in der Berufsschule. Ja, nein, aber ich verstehe nein, einfach nein. kein Wort davon. Aber es ist einfach zu gut. Und in Deutschland haben wir Shirin David X McDonalds in so einer Special Edition. Da singt sie Weihnachtslieder zu Weihnachten wegen so einem beschissenen Burger. Danke, Merkel. Bro, better invade Poland. <lacht> I'll stop. I am not homosexual. I like it. If it I smells mean, correct. Okay, listen. Uh, you know what to do. Now. This is the problem. Can the problem is that as a guy, you're attracted to anything with curves, right? So like you could see a rock formation, and if it looks curvy enough and it looks like it can be impregnated, you'd want to f*** it. And it's as simple true. as that. That's a hundred percent true. And that's why <laughs> femboys, like liking femboys, isn't gay. That's straight. That's it's like not gay. It's a little gay though. Nah, but it's not gay. It's really not. No, Just because you're like sleeping gay, with a femboy doesn't like mean tea. you're sucking them off. It's as simple as that. So you believe that you could be a straight guy and like femboys at the same time? Yes. No, bro, that's scary, bro. I wanna I wanna have enough money to eat today. That's a vine. I mean, true, though. Bro, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Bro, what? The fuck did I just watch? What? Celebrities with their younger selves. You were at celebrities with their younger slaves. <laughs> no, you can't read now. <laughs> now he looks like Bart. <laughs> so they comp sound does make them gag. What? Oh. Oh. Um. oh. I guess because it kind of sounds like you're gagging. Kind of sounds similar. Wait, that's interesting. It feels when you drop your phone on your face. <laughs> what? Why would your phone be so heavy? For real? Wait, 
what? I mean, I've dropped my phone on my face. But, okay. Whatever. Trust me, bro. Play Red Dead Redemption 2. Alright. Resident Evil 4. Alright. League of Legends. True. It's a shit game. Dying Light. True. Fallout 4. True. Overwatch. Yo. Resident Evil. Yo. Fallout New Vegas. Yo. <laughs> Valorant. Yo. Detroit, uh huh. Days Gone. Don't remember what Days Gone was. Rainbow Six Siege. <laughs> the Walking Dead. Oh, watch. Oh, now it's watch. I thought it was play. <laughs> I spot American History X. No clue what Big Mouth is. I guess that's good. Dexter. I don't think I've seen Dexter as well. But I right, facts though. <laughs> Mr. Beast knows this is shit. I just love my dog. Yeah. My brother told me how to taste the bag. Get ready to feel like a little bit. Oh, the lunch sleep. What? I scratch your back. Oh, tweak you. Scratch mine. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, what? Oh. Hey, Garfy, Garfy. That's a good spot. Hey, yo. No, what is that, bro? Mommy, help me put that up. Look at this candle. You want to talk about funny shit? Look at this candle. Hey, Kaiju got a vibrator out. It's good. It's okay. It's okay. What's wrong with this? Oh, okay. Now nah, he needs to be put down ASAP. What the fuck? Ah! Ah! Oh, mother of God! I'm sorry, but I think it's, uh, it's immediate family only. We're all family. I understand, but uh, there's a certain... To do this and admit that you're in danger. Was Walter White doing at fire? <laughs> Why is it a TikTok full of XX Tashana and Jules? Hey, don't question it, bro. Don't question it, bro. Is today the day? I guess today is the day. <laughs> Cause you have the same shit here. Oh, I mean, I watch them. That's why. I mean, why? As simple as that. TikTok puts the shit that you watch. All right, one more time. <laughs> Third time's a charm. Uh, 
Rex. Why not? Because yes, then he died. They were not. India with 90s tech. Says you, bro. Uh, slow as a bullet, bro. He posed the way. Wait, that's cool. I guess, yeah. Yeah, but in SpongeBob. Fobos Plankton. Fobos is tall as fuck. Nah, this is cool though. Kill it draws back to pass. He's airing it out. It's gonna be long. No! Western. I guess. I appreciate the links. Jackbox. Yo, Papa. Like, <laughs> like, what do you mean by Papa? I don't think you grew out perfectly. Okay, I mean perfectly. I mean, yeah. It ain't no one perfect, but like, I grew up fine. Being the... Yeah, I did percent perfect. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Michael's special ability yeah. while chasing Molly on the mission Legal Trouble, she will become incredibly <laughs> yeah, confused. Given enough time, Molly will eventually teleport back to her normal path. Move! A madman's hey, coming! Hey, hey, oh, stop! Look out! Ah! Oh, goofy ass. Ah, oh. oh, that was nasty and needless. In GTA 5, if you use Michael's special ability, did you know that it is suggested that in ending B of GTA 5, that it was Michael's own words that convinced Franklin to kill him? This is hinted by what Franklin says on the phone as he walks into the distance. Man, you know how it is, homie. You just start running and shit, and all of a sudden your legs give and you just can't yeah. run no more. And here's Michael earlier in the game at the end of the mission, Fresh Meat. Man, you burned every motherfucker you've ever known. It was that or die. Well, Look, I know it sounds time, cold. Yeah. I don't expect you to understand it. Not yet, but you will. Look, you wake up one day, and, and your legs, they just give. You just can't run anymore. Did you know that it is suggested that in ending B of GTA 5, you can give your guns to NPCs in GTA 5? Wait, what? During any robbery events, just change weapon as you are giving back their wallets, and you will give them far more than that. Here, man. Man, I'm a hypocrite. What a gentleman. And for once, I'm not being sarcastic. 
You can give your guns to NPCs in GTA 5. During any robbery event, just change weapon. If you never That's hung out with Trevor and Michael after the end of GTA 5, then you missed out on the real resolution of their story arc. Well, T? Mm, well, what, sugar tits? <laughs> well, we got there. In the end, I mean. I mean, we moved on. Have we? I hope so. Haven't we? Hmm. I guess. I mean, I fucked you over, and that's why I want to apologize. And I also want to give you my share of the money we boosted in this last score. Hmm. You do? Sure. I don't really need it. I want you to be happy. Wow. Well, I don't... I don't need it either. And I don't want it. It was never about the money, Michael. I know it wasn't. It was... I was in a tough situation, and I fucked up, and I apologize. Hmm. Okay. I accept your apology. Thank you. Hmm. GTA 5 speedrunners will do anything to complete the game faster, but for one strategy there is no runner brave enough to do it, and that is bike gliding across the Alamo Sea on the mission the Polito score set up. This would save a significant amount of time, but this would need to be done 3 hours into a run, and if you hit anything going down, or don't get enough distance, you are screwed. No, bro, you're really risking everything there. Hot revenge, you can play football alone. You can learn how to do a wheelie alone. True. I mean, yeah. Everyone can have friends, but like, you need to find, you know, actual good friends. If they're a bunch of assholes, then what's the point of being friends with a bunch of assholes? This was truly insane, one in a million. I was 11 hours into a no damage run of GTA 5 where I permanently have 1 HP and this happened on the very final mission. You can- Ah. Okay, that uh, this has never happened before. I went on to succeed in this very okay. run after trying to do this for well over a year. Could you imagine how pissed I would have been had that hit me? This was truly- I mean, yeah. The explosive sound of sticky bombs is apparently a lot louder than you might think. This can be shown by placing some and then flying to the other side of the map before exploding them. The explosive sound of sticky bombs- It's the same loud This was right truly there. a one- I mean, yeah, you can hear it. Stuff alone can be tough. I mean, yeah, yeah that's true. People you trust you can rely on. Those people will come. It takes time. I mean, yeah. It takes time to find... Actually, like... People you can, um... Yeah, rely on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once in a lifetime event, in the nine years of GTA 5 speedrunning history, the frame perfect launch on the mission Nervous Run, where you reach the waypoint on top of the water tower, has been done exactly once, and it likely will never be done again. He's not necessarily good, he's just a guy who takes his job quite seriously. Oh my god! Dude! Holy shit! Please, if you didn't see that! That's one in a million! One in a billion! One in a trillion! How the Hey, Sabin. How you doing? I mean, at least you can rely on yourself though, right? The perfect timing for this NPC to accidentally save my GT5 speedrun was truly unbelievable. This was so many years ago that I wasn't even aware that there are tigers in missions. But I, I don't know if that's... I don't think that's the case for... Oh, <gasps> oh my god! Oh, he... It's... That... That... That that tiger was about to kill me. I didn't even know oh, a, no, a, a tiger... A, a puma, a, a lion, I don't know. A, a lion a cougar, is crazy. I, I don't know. Whatever's that. The he perfect timing for this NP... Yeah, there are wildlife, but it's kind of rare to find. Cougar, ah. Uh, do a depression like two to three times. Damn. Well, I mean, if you went through two or three times, you can uh, go through another. I don't know. 
Now, I never had depression though. This alternate ending for GT. Gay 5 shows what should have happened when Franklin tried to take out Trevor in ending A. Hey man, how you doing? Shit, I'm good, T. I know what this is about. You do? Of course! Huh. It's Michael! You're the peacemaker! Well, I ain't having it, all right? I mean, that's it, right? Huh? Wasn't it? Wasn't it? But Michael ain't the problem. Man, you gonna get us all fucking killed. You gonna whack me? Huh? Me? You're fucking dead! I don't remember this happening. Wait, what? What? Ah! Oh! oh, Franklin! Oh, he. Oh, it's animated. Go through, but I don't know if you can make it out again. Oh, he almost didn't make it out once. Oh. Maybe you need help? I don't know. Like, reach out. Like, what about your parents? Couldn't they help you? Just made by him. Oh. Now look what you made me do! Oh! 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 <laughs> this. Okay, that was cool, though. I thought it was actually Did you real. know that if you die during the final shootout of GT 5s prologue, Michael will stand up, giving away that he's faking his injury? I'm standing! Also, if you look closely, you can see that Brad and Michael both have their eyes open for some reason. Did you know huh. that if you die during the final sh- But your mom say that, well, you have to learn how to live alone. I mean, different people are different. Some people don't need people to, you know, live with. And some people need people to live with. You have to grow up. That's kind of, that's kind of shitty answer. Just grow out of your depression. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> grow up. This was easily the most clutch save of my decade. It's speedrunning GTA 5. It is most memorable because it didn't make any sense, and I sounded like I came when it happened. It's not that one, it's that one. Right? No, it is this one. You fucking kidding me? You're fucking kidding me. Unlucky. I can't believe I just did that. Fun is actually dead. Unless I can make this jump from here. Saying stop being autistic. I mean, yeah, I guess. Good tones. Wait, but you have a girlfriend, right? What about her, though? Won't she help? Let me know if you can make it out of this one. I mean, I hope you make... Go through it. I mean, what? Get out of it. Ho, ho, ho! that kill him you're scared to tell her oh but yeah what about then like a therapy or something could help <gasps> that was the best save but I feel like if she's I mean yeah true you shouldn't be if she's the one then she should accept you like who, what you have even she will leave you. What's to say fake stuff to get money? I mean, it could be, yeah. If you attempt to hook up with... I mean, it, it honestly, it depends what therapist you get. Some do for money, some actually try to help. Let's just, okay, fair enough. Fair enough. 
someone for the third time in GTA 5 and you go to meet them in a taxi, things become quite uncomfortable. It's a bit of a drive. How about I get you warmed up? What do we have here, what? Mr. Winky? <sighs> <sighs> This job wouldn't be so bad if it weren't for all the shitty drivers in Los Santos. No, this is if okay, you attempt bro. to hook up with someone for the we third more... time in GTA 5, we, we had those moments. Five, and you go to meet them in a taxi, things become quite uncomfortable. It's no, a that was a that's crazy though. This impressive, obviously legit GTA 5 speedrun beat the previous world record by almost six hours. What's up, can I love nigga? <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh my god! Best god, friend, Neil. Yeah. His name is Shot Him! Yahoo! Real. Yahoo! 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 Yeah, this, Yahoo! this is the. Yo, that's the one that won the speedrun. Yahoo! Legit. The runner, when asked how they felt about having the new world record, oh simply responded, The run is trash, so much time loss, anyone with half a brain could do better. This imp- World record. There is a glitch in GTA 5 that makes the game look more like GTA 4. Wait, what? All you have to do is face north with an RPG and then save and reload while attempting to fire. You will then see yourself dead and when you respawn, you'll have a persistent death haze all over your game that somewhat oh. mimics the more gritty toned down coloring of GTA 4. Wait, that 4. is cool. There is a glitch in GTA 5 that makes the game look okay. more like GTA 4. I'm sure 4. everyone knows that if you follow a main character in GTA 5, that they will eventually punch you out. But did you know this happens even in the ocean? Stop the stalking. Okay, your choice, funny guy. Getting KO'd underwater is crazy. Alone. Hey, relax, homie. You fucking the... Okay, your choice, funny guy. Okay. I'm sure everyone knows that if you follow a main character in GTA 5, the that they will the eventually... There is a weird detail you likely never noticed with the crossing warning lights. In order to achieve their flashing effect, rather than having two lights turning on and off, there is just one light, but it is moved between the two locations. While you can somewhat see this if you just pay very close attention, it is far more visible when you slow down the game. Oh. On the mission Bury the Hatchet, there is a weird detail Bro. you likely never noticed with the lazy devs, man. The legendary complications jump is a strategy that GT5 speedrunners fear to do. It involves multiple powered brake boosts, good traffic luck, and a perfect angle, all to get into Michael's backyard on the mission complications just a bit faster. Yeah. Perfect. We did it guys, we got it perfect exactly once. The legendary complications jump is a strategy that GT5 An amazingly powerful to... new glitch in <clears throat> GTA 5 is causing angry debate in the speedrunning community. First we perform a ladder launch by holding sprints, pressing up and then quickly pressing down. Now in the air, we press the exit vehicle key, okay. run and start director See mode before we fall. Once at the director mode trailer, we attempt to go back into story mode but as we're loading in, we die from fall damage. This respawns us back at the trailer. We then attempt to enter director mode, but the game instead spawns us into story mode, but with the menu from director mode active. We now have access to all the teleports and features like permanent invincibility oh, that are wow. not meant to be accessible normally in story mode. These can even be used in missions, unlike the standard cheat codes. You can see why this no. would be controversial for speedrunning. Time will tell whether it's banned or new categories are made. For those who want to try this, sadly it isn't possible on the newest patch. We traditionally uh, run on patch 1.27 where this is available. So now what? And the they patched it. Fair. If you love GTA 5, you likely have already seen an incomplete version of this clip. Four years ago I uploaded this old speedrunning strategy and it still gets shared around to this day. I think I've seen it. Davy, how you doing? What the hell? Was that really necessary? I don't know what you're talking about. 
If you love GTA 5, you likely have already seen an incomplete version there of There is an incredibly an stupid way to rob a hairdresser's in GTA 5 without them getting mad at you. Oh wow. Let me just jump on that register. Please be more careful. There is an incredibly stupid Works, Honestly, having a call from your father ruin your GTA 5 no damage run in front of thousands of people is impressively embarrassing. Hey, Dad. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I can't talk right now. I'm streaming. Thanks. I'll see you later, Dad. Bye. Grind is real. No! Now call him back. Honestly, how... I never thought I'd see the day where games would develop so much that this mistake would even be possible. What have you done with your foot? It appears to like this place and wants to stay. <laughs> Get your foot out of here! Twist your leg, you drunken bastard! Did that just spawn in? I, I didn't see that. Help me over oh shit! Oh shit! I thought it was still a cutscene and <laughs> I looked and saw I was meant to be pressing buttons. That's was how too good late. the game looks. That I mean, I did that for comedic effect, guys. I'm not, I'm not dumb. <laughs> I never thought boats need surprisingly little water to propel you forward. They can therefore easily climb up streams with barely enough water to keep your feet wet. But why? This seems to be because the propellers will go under the ground and therefore access the water that is underneath. Oh, wow. Boats need surprisingly little water to propel you forward. Originally in GTA 5, it was intended that Michael brutally murder the janitor on the mission cleaning out the bureau, rather than talking him into giving up his gear. We can see this play out in an unfinished cutscene hidden in the game files. That looks so bad. Bored. Stupid? How about a fulfilling career as a stunt double? To break into Pinewood, <laughs> you just might have to break through a windshield. Cunning Stunt Academy is San Andreas' oldest accredited stunt school. We have classes in high-speed accidents, taking a baseball bat to the face, <coughs> getting shot, knife to the back, falling off a building on fire, and getting run over. <coughs> If you make it through our course, you are ready for the big screen. That's a brutal. Bro just Originally, he just syringed him. That ain't brutal. Did you know you can pick up women in GTA 5? Michael and Franklin what? can talk positively to NPCs, and if any respond by talking about their day, they will get into any vehicle you are in. What's going on? My new job. <laughs> All the big stars walk by my desk. Yeah, I'm kind of sorry I ain't. <laughs> Please, stop speaking to me. I just look famous. What? That's possible? <laughs> Fuck your broke ass. Did you know you can pick up women in GTA 5? Michael and Franklin can talk. My no first clue. attempt at crossing GTA 5's map while blindfolded didn't exactly go as planned. You're in the hangar. I'm in the. How could I be in the hangar? Turn right. Turn right. Right. Stop. Go back. Floor it. Not that okay. much. You are back in the hangar. I'm back. No. <laughs> <bank. laughs> Shall fine? Reverse. Not that much. Yeah, he can't Left. See. Stop. Too much. Turn right. Bad. Bad. You Reverse. Can't. Slightly right. Slightly right. And then forward? Yes. There's Stop. no way you can No. A cougar would be game. better at following instructions. <laughs> I'm reversing no. and then going left. It's on fire. You are in Sandy choice. Just walk. Forward. I'm hearing so much crashing. Am I, am I free? Oh no. Sounds like I'm free. You are stuck. I'm stuck? You're, You're stuck. 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 We're stuck. We're stuck. Okay, I reverse a lot. You are full lost and powered. Okay, okay. We'll start again. We learnt we learned some stuff. Let me look at the previous How weird. the fuck did you get me here? <laughs> All right. A little known fact is that the exhaust of your vehicle dictates how deep in water it can go. So vehicles with high exhaust, oh. like the Joe Build Hauler, can actually drive around quite far away from the shore. Oh, sir. If even a small bit of the water gets in the exhaust, the vehicle will stop. 
Bro, what? The best place to see this in action is actually the Vespucci canals. That's insane, bro. How you doing, Raj? A little known fact is that the exhaust of your vehicle dictates how- My raw anger in this clip has now been a meme for over three years. Meme. Partly because what happened occurred nine right. hours into 100% yeah, speedrun of GTA 5, which at the time ended up being world record. If this helicopter blows me up with a rocket, I'm gonna Yo. need to buy a new table. I cannot fucking believe it. Oh, hi. Thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. You have no conception of how rare that is. It is millions to one! No amount of cleaning is ever gonna get that much spit off my monitor. God damn. My... Uh, seen better rage clips, but I... When inside a building in GTA 5, have you ever wondered about the mysterious occasional distant explosions that you hear? Yeah. It might surprise you to learn that they are caused by pilots of planes despawning when they get too close to the building you are in. They're despawning? So they're just suiciding? When inside a building in GT- What the fuck? By punching and switching character at the right time, you can get through immovable doors like those at the police station. Oh. While somewhat more difficult, you can get into the house from the janitor on cleaning out the bureau. Wait, that's cool. What the fuck? You can even get inside Floyd and Deborah's house after Trevor kills them. There is of course nothing here, despite what that clickbait Mad Carl channel would have you believe. Nothing here. On the mission Father Son, it is possible to get free reign of the map and see where Michael's boat ends up by soft locking the game. Once Franklin has climbed onto the hood of your car, you can bump him into a wall, causing him to stand up. This allows you to push him off the hood of your car, and surprisingly, he just gets back into his seat. What's changed is that the game never expected this outcome to occur, so there are no possible fail triggers that can happen from this point on. In oh. this state, you can go any way you want, but if you do follow Michael's boat, you'll find that his boat ends up in the middle of the road when the truck that is pulling it becomes decoupled from it. Davey might just be the toughest character in GTA 5. Davey. I... <laughs> <laughs> Davey. Oh my god. Davey. How you doing? About as good as can be expected. <laughs> About as good as can be expected. <laughs> I have never before gotten screwed with such perfect timing. Be warned, you have to wait for it. Might be a little bit too close. Dang. Well... Fuck me, right? Fuck you, yo. Car exploded. All it takes to end a GT5 no damage run is just one wrong accidental button press. A whole day yeah, destination. I've been there. It's usually a lot better to go. No! I've been there, yo. The V button to change your camera angle is next to the F button, which is to get out of the car. Well, I've not been on that situation, but. I've gotten it accidentally. If you start a hangout and take your friend onto a train, they will not understand where they are and thus will be quite confused. You got a good reason for that? Don't you open your damn eyes. You are out of control. <laughs> oh, wow. You get that if you start, you may never have noticed, but each character's special ability only regenerates to 50% if all you do is wait patiently. Traditionally, you need to do things related to the special ability to have it regenerate further. It is therefore a surprise that doing yoga with Michael will fully regenerate his special ability. 
This mm. is a feature that I guarantee few know about and even fewer have ever taken advantage of. To be clear, it isn't just a matter of waiting in yoga. You have to complete the required minigame to get the buff. If you watch really closely, you can see at the end here as it fully regenerates. And the more you know. On the Polito score heist, you slowly lose the money that you have stolen over time. Yeah. Seemingly unrelated I is that during that. the bulldozer's Drowsy Browser is now following. Drowsy Browser, appreciate the follow. Maybe check all of this money platform I'll make music. Protection, <clears throat> there is no fail condition related to waiting. This then means that you can wait until you lose all the money you are stealing and even go under and therefore steal negative money. Considering present scrutiny on public well, you worker can get remuneration, minus. what? This is a big win. So there is a tiny weakness in tanks, for those unaware. Where this hatch is that I went inside, there is like a very thin line around it where bullets can actually penetrate. The odds of a bullet going through there is like a bajillion to one, but it did happen that time. Once more, chess. David versus Goliath. Me, of course, being David and the hillbillies being Goliath. I am just so weak here in my tank, but I will overcome this motherfucker don't miss. No, he's fucking good. That motherfucker don't miss, man. He's good. But I will overcome uh, adversity. Are you... I... I mean, I guess, yeah. Uh... Every time I talk shit, I die. And don't talk On shit. On the mission Chop, unused dialogue suggests there was originally a way for Chop to die permanently and for Lamar to lose his van. Chop didn't have to go out like that, man. Chop, man, I miss him already. Man, first shit blow up, then my van do. What? There we go, chat. I did it. Fuck you, Lester. You gonna let me in or what? Ah! Uh, just... Okay, I wouldn't more. let that in my house. I mean, Lester got some sick security systems. <laughs> There we go, chat. I did it. Good one. As always. Love all your mentors. Hope you enjoyed your stay. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Hey, I'm not that guy, but uh, I am that fellow. So, um, peace out and a good night.